Simone Biles is the GOAT. Come on in the room so I can talk to you about the new Netflix series called Simone Biles Rising from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hey, boo. But if you are a returning subscriber, you already know how my review videos go. Full disclaimer, there will be spoilers all up and through this video. So go on ahead and press pause. If you haven't watched it, go on over to Netflix and watch this series. It's literally only two episodes long. I don't know why Netflix did us like that, but here we are. But if you've already watched it, put in the comment section, what did you think about Simone Biles? What did you think about her journey? What she has been through, her mental health challenges, her success, her rise, her fall, all of the things. Let's talk about it because I got some things to say. The first thing that we have to talk about is her success. I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that she is extremely successful in all of the things that she has done in the realm of gymnastics. When I say she's the GOAT, I mean she is the greatest of all time and she has the records to prove it. Sis has the medals, the skills, and all of the things to back it up. And I love this so much because it's very interesting. There's a difference between someone getting their success overnight or because it's inherited and someone who has worked their behind off, who has put in the blood, sweat, tears, literally, and has sacrificed so much on their journey. I love seeing those people win. Like I've already mentioned, she deserves it. But one of the things that comes with success is the limelight and we know that people can be cruel so you are having all of the eyes on you just like with any other celebrity whether you're doing something good bad or in between the whole world is literally watching you and we know that the normal person like you and i could probably do something and no one would pay any attention to it but if a celebrity or someone like simone biles does something even the teeniest tiniest thing it gets magnified it gets amplified and it becomes a bigger issue than what it probably truly was in the first place and there's a different experience that comes with success when you are literally the best of all time i don't know how many different like skills and you know, flips and things that have been renamed after her because she's the only one that has done it so far. I mean, she really is super duper dope. But when you are the best, coupled with you being a black woman, let's talk about it, it hits different. Not only are you breaking boundaries and barriers and there's little boys and little girls who are looking up to you that says, wow, if Simone Biles can do it, I can do it. You know, and she has someone to look up to like Dominique Dawes and the other African-American women that were in the Olympics that made it as far as she did in the past. However, comma, you know it's gonna be some haters. As much as we don't wanna admit this, she has a lot of opposition not just because of what happened in Tokyo for her, but just because she is a black woman and that has had so many of the successes that she's had. Because look, if we look at the history of the thing, the people who have had the success that Simone has had hasn't looked like her. The hair ain't the same. The skin ain't the same. The height ain't the same. The body type isn't the same. And so when you have this prototype of what people think that an American Olympic winner is supposed to look like because of European standards. And then you got somebody who is very much Simone Biles. <laughs> It is different. And not to add on the extra layer of her being a little bit older. I know in the documentary, she stated like she was like 26, 27, probably at the time of this video, she's almost 28 ish or so. And while that isn't old for somebody to be doing all of the things that she has done as far as the gymnast and the moves and all of that and being in that space, it is older. I've seen the same energy on that other documentary called Sprint that I actually didn't do a review video about. <clears throat> but we saw the same energy on that where there were women in their 30s in Jamaica and all of these other countries who felt like they were getting older and they couldn't compete and hang with the young folks anymore. So they were like, whoo, I got to give it my last go round, give it all I got win so I can prove to myself that there's other women that can be older and still kill it. The second thing that you know I had to talk to you guys about is mental health. We could not have a conversation about Simone Biles without talking about mental health. I firmly believe that anybody I'll say everybody that is in the limelight in whatever capacity needs a therapist. Y'all can fight me on this if you want to, but when your life, your family, your kids, your marriage, your career, your money, the way that you look, when everything is under that microscope, when everything is magnified, when every, it's, it's like this fishbowl that they talked about even in the documentary and the series, it's like when you are in this fishbowl and everybody is looking at you, 
you can either make it or it could break you. And if I'm being honest, we've seen both Anne with Simone. We've seen her heights. We've seen her do all of the amazing things and kill it. But we also seen, and the whole world seen, what she experienced when she was in Tokyo back in 2020. And while I think she did a great job and she made a very wise decision for herself, for her own mental health and for her team. I know a lot of you guys and a lot of commentators and the little looky-loos didn't think so. Y'all thought that she was a quitter. Y'all thought that she gave up. Y'all thought that she sucked. Y'all thought that fill in the blank and that really wasn't the case. Sis had to prioritize her mental health because she had so many things that she needed to unpack and she needed to process in order for there to be a mind-body connection. That's why she was getting the twisties all up in the air and not finding herself in the air and feeling like she was lost, literally, because there wasn't a connection between her mind and her body, they were disconnected. So it was like the twisties was a metaphor, but a real example of what happens when your mind, body, and spirit is not on one accord. For honest, we shouldn't have to wait for something bad to happen to us or the trigger to happen for us to be in therapy, for us to prioritize our mental health. And especially for us in the black community, we know how we view mental health. While it's becoming better and we are, improving there's still a lot of people who don't believe in it they don't want to go they feel like you can just pray it away the therapy is just for white people all of these different stigmas that we believe in the black community is very detrimental to us because if we being honest we're the ones who need it the most that's why i wrote my small pocket sized book called staying sane in an insane world a prescription for even better mental health because i knew that there would still be people who would never go to therapy but they will read a book and they'll get the how to, what is mental health, how to manage my symptoms, what type of therapist should I go? All of these things are jam packed in this small pocket size booklet because it helps us get to that next level that we all need. So if you are interested in tapping into that, go to stayingsaneworld.com to get your copy. Again, www.stayingsaneworld.com. While it wasn't just about Simone going and getting help because, you know, she had the little twisties, it really brought up the real trauma that everybody seen where there were tons of different gymnasts who were sexually assaulted by one of their previous doctors that were in the space in the realm. And I can't even remember the number of people that he has or the women that he has abused. I think it was in the like 200s or something because he's been in the gang with them for so long. This had this whole sexual abuse that was worldwide that everybody knew about in the world. She grew up in foster care. She was adopted by her grandparents. She probably has some mommy and some daddy wounds. There are a number of different things that she was experiencing on top of trying to get married and trying to build her own life. And while I hate that this happened to her and all of the other women who experienced this level of sexual assault and abuse, I do know that it sparked a larger and a more important conversation around mental health worldwide. I mean, it sucks that people do have to go through negative experiences like that, but if I have to go through something so other people can learn and not experience all of the negativity that I experience and grow and evolve, and there's going to be more awareness in a particular era, I'll probably vote for that. I said so many times, we don't go through the things that we go through just for us. We go through it for other people, other people that are watching us, little boys and girls, those people who have been sexually assaulted and raped and taken advantage of and they've never said anything. But when Simone says something or one of the other ladies says something, they're like, oh, I got the courage to speak up too. Like these are the important conversations that that experience allowed us to share on a wider level. The third and final thing that we have to talk about before before I give my final thoughts. And y'all know I got some predictions for part two because they said that part two is supposed to come back in the fall because obviously it is an Olympic year. So I'm gonna assume we're gonna get a lot of BTS behind the scenes and background on what she has been experiencing this year for Paris 2024. And we're gonna be taken along on that journey and I can't wait. The third thing is her support system was solid listening to how she talked so highly of her husband, which we love, okay? And that's, that's one of the things that I appreciate about their marriage and their relationship. Like she's in the limelight in her own niche, in her own lane, but he's also 
in the NFL, so he knows what it's like to be in the limelight too. So all of the things that she experienced, her, I don't want to even call it a downfall, but her little setback that she had in Tokyo and, you know, all of the sexual abuse and things of that nature, it allowed him to be like, oh, let me go to therapy too. So I love the fact that it prompted a deeper conversation that they both probably need and it's also going to help them in their marriage too. Got her husband on board, we got her parents, her, which was AKA her grandparents, if you didn't know. Her mom and her dad was there, supportive. Her teammates were so supportive of her. They were like, sis, come back, try out. We wanna see you come again tomorrow. We love you, we're gonna encourage you. And that was so beautiful to see that these women looked up to her and they knew her greatness and they wanted her to continue to succeed. Then you had her extended family, her siblings, and even, I think it was Houston, but somewhere in Texas, where the community really rallied around her. I don't know if you guys seen that moment where it was like she was in a parade or something and she was standing there or sitting on the, the car. She's waving to the people, but it was like, welcome back home. We love you. We support you. And I was like, man, that felt, that probably felt really good for her to come back home after Tokyo, after 2020, the biggest disappointment of her life probably, and all of the naysayers just talking everywhere to come back home to a community that loves and support her. I bet you that made her feel really good. Can't forget about her coaches, which they seem to be on board. I thought that when someone has a gymnast or even just an athlete in general, and they have to kind of like pull back a little bit because of an injury or because of something personal, I felt like I thought in my mind that the coaches would get upset. Like, oh man, we put in all this work, push through, go for it, keep pushing, don't give up type of energy. But they were like, no, 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 this is dangerous. She can die, you know, doing some of these stunts. If she's not connected, if she gets the twisties in the air, she can land and fall on her head and break her neck. And so they understood the importance of not just her physical health, but also her mental health. And to see them support her and them seeing the transformation of her getting better and stronger as the days and the weeks went on, I thought that that was so dope to watch. Not everybody has a support system like that. And when the rest of the world is watching you, you're gonna have your people that are like, go Simone, go girl, go. And then you're gonna have your haters. Like she experienced, she said that she had so much depression and she couldn't even go into the room in the closet where she had all her memorabilia from Tokyo 2020 in there. She was just sad. And she was like, this is supposed to be the most exciting time of my life. Why do I feel so miserable? And so it's because of people like y'all. <laughs> y'all talk so bad about her. Y'all said that she sucked and she was a quitter and you know that she gave up on her team and my mama taught me to never give up and you just don't know what someone is truly going through. And if she, I'm not trying to speak this over her, but if she would have died by suicide or had some other type of major injury, y'all's energy would have been different. So she was doing something preventive. Like I said, it was a very wise decision that she did this. And I believe she gonna come back bigger, better, stronger and kill it this year, okay? So let me give my final thoughts on this and then I'll give you guys my predictions for part two. So I think Simone Biles is a once in a lifetime athlete. That means we, we never, ever, 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 ever gonna see somebody like Simone doing the things that she does, breaking all of the records, and being a woman and being a black woman and being in this age category, I don't think we're gonna see it in our lifetime. So I'm glad that I have the opportunity in real color while it's happening kind of like live to experience this. And I can tell, you know, future generations like, oh no, 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 Simone was that girl <laughs> when 2024 was installed. And I don't know her personally, but I'm so proud of her. When I was watching those two episodes, I was like, I am so proud of her, especially with her upbringing and where she came from and all of the hardships that she's had in her life and how she's worked her behind off to get to this place. I'm like, she could have gave up. She could have said, F the Olympics 2024, I'm not going, my, my life is ruined. She could have just went into this downward spiral and stayed there, but she chose not to do that. And she wanted to really just show the world and kind of show herself, mainly herself, that she can do this no matter what. I just hope this time around, you guys are not nitpicky and as hard on her as you guys were before, because in the black community and abroad, we talk so badly about her. We talk especially about her hair, okay? 
Sis had to put a whole section in the documentary because y'all talk so bad about her hair, her hairstyles, her hair being nappy, her hair not being done, and all of these different things, especially y'all came for her. Y'all remember on her wedding day? Oh my gosh, I was so sad that we honed in and focused in on somebody's edges and her hairstyle on one of the biggest days of her life. That wasn't right. Some of y'all's hair be looking raggedy and a mess too, but we don't say nothing to you. But I digress. I'm just saying protect black women at all costs because we are the very most unprotected species on this earth. I feel like no one stands up for us. No one protects us. No one stands up and say, hey, no, 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 this isn't right. So protect her at all costs because she deserves it. Because I'm slightly nosy, I would love to see a full documentary outside of this series of her life. I know this one is very much centered around gymnastics and her career, even though we get to see personal stuff, but her story was so intriguing to me that I had to go online. I'm like, wait, how she grow up? Wait, she was adopted when? She was in foster care? Wait, what? What happened with her and her siblings? What's up, where her mama at? You know, I really dug a little bit deeper into her story. And so I'm like, this would be a really dope documentary to see kind of like the beginning all the way until where we're at now and beyond, I think that they should put that in the mix. So my final thoughts on this is like, obviously we need more episodes. Every single series that I have seen on Netflix where it's like a part one and a part two, I feel like we had at least like three, four, five episodes per part. Why they only give us two? That's not enough. As I already mentioned, I think part two is going to be centered around the Olympics, obviously because it is an Olympic year. So we're going to see that journey behind the scenes. We're going to get the real and the raw of what really goes on, not just what we see on television. I think she's going to kill it. I think she's going to come out blazing. She's probably going to set some more records. I don't know what sis is capable of, but I know that I have enough faith in her that she is going to really make a mark and come back stronger and better. Unfortunately, I feel like after this, she's going to low-key retire. I think after she proves to herself and to the rest of the world that she's capable, that she's able, that she's going to kill it, she's going to keep her record, she's probably going to do bigger and better and all of the things, she's going to be like, this is, the this is, this is it for me. You know, she she's going to do that. And I think it's the smartest thing to do when you have already hit all of the records and you like a uh, what's the dude Phelps or you saying Bolt and you have all of this um, clouts and metal and all of those things. You want to retire at your highest, right? Like you don't want to keep trying and then we just see you diminish and then people remember you at your demise versus at your height. I think this will be her last, last go around. Either way, thank you for taking time to watch another review video on my channel. Make sure to stick around, watch some other movie, TV show reviews, and I will see you next time. Be blessed.